welcome or welcome back if you are returning. My name is Burr. And if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe because that is what we do here. Also, if you don't like giving a like to this video, that super helps us out. My own friendship with the studio began some 10 years past, shortly after we joined the Temple Knights. I learned his name soon enough, but a city had barely registered my existence. I was less a fellow recruit and more a shadow which occasionally darkened his path. And so I might have remained, had fate not seen fit to intervene. While out on patrol, our company was set upon by a dragon, and we were the only two to survive. The experience forged a bond between us, as such life-threatening situations are wont to do. <laughs> I guess, yeah. No, no. He's got a point. Despite our friendship, he remained an intense and solitary youth, wholly obsessed with claiming vengeance against Needhog. Revenge was ever at the forefront of his mind. Revenge for the death of his parents, and revenge for his younger brother. I would venture that in Alphino he sees something of his lost sibling. Oh. And in the ungentle chidings of Istidian, Alphino has found the elder brother he never had. Aw, oh, yeah. That's cute. <laughs> Truth be told, Estidian's tactless observations have saved me from disaster more than once, and I can well understand Alphino's affection for him. He is a friend for whom I would gladly... Oh. Lord Commander, your presence is required in the infirmary. Is he... Tell them I am on my way. Quickly, Barry, let's go to it. Okay. Let's go! <gasps> Is that him? I don't know him without his helmet. <laughs> oh. <gasps> Estinian! <gasps> Cease your mewling, boy. It grates my ears. <laughs> Forgive me. When I saw you awaken, I could not... It was such a relief. We feared you might never wake up. Oh, this is so sweet. Now, now, Astinian. If Master Alphano thought any less of you, you would still be Nidhogg's plaything. Or dead. Or worse, expelled. I, I, twas but a jest. I thank you, Alphano. And you too, warrior of light. Quite how you managed to persuade Hraisboga to aid in his brood brother's downfall, I cannot imagine. But full glad am I that you did. <clears throat> Yet again, you have achieved the impossible. I, for my part, owe you an apology. When last we met, I did willingly loose an arrow at your heart. Can you forgive me? There is naught to forgive, Hamerick. You but acted in defense of Ishgard, as is your duty. Were you any less single-minded about it, I would not follow you into battle, nor trust you at my back. Besides, I had come to the self-same conclusion that I would have to perish for Nidhogg to be stopped. So let us dispense with the hand-wringing. I have heard enough mewling for one day. Oh! The tendrils of Nidhogg's foul presence bound up every fiber of my being, usurping my senses. 
but I yet retain some trace of awareness. The worm's mind was as a vast and tumultuous sea. Endlessly, its black waters churned. His grief and despair at Ratatoska's murder never calming, never receding. Driven by this surging current came wave upon wave of unrelenting rancor. It was the very image of my own heart. There I saw the dark reflection of the hatred I felt after Nidhogg slew my family. When no path remained save vengeance against Dragonkind. Neither one of us had a choice. But I was blessed with something Nidhogg was not. Comrades and teachers to console and admonish me. Had I not had them to gainsay my obsession, it would surely have consumed me as Nidhogs did him, and we would have been in all respects alike. Though his shade is banished, his spirit scattered upon the sea of clouds, I feel no joy at his passing. Where once I craved vengeance, I now crave rest. Lord Commander, my hunt is at an end. I would lay down the mantle of Azure Dragoon. My friend. Has tired himself with too many words. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second, maybe I just do like. <laughs> I doubt not that he will make a full recovery, but he must be allowed some few days of quiet. Oh, Alfie. I too must see my path to its end. Sleep well, my friend. Da, da, da. Following the battle with Nidhogg on the steps of faith, Sir Emery called an assembly that he might make his final proclamation as acting head of state. T'was there, with one decree, that the thousand-year rule of the archbishops was ended, paving the way for a new republic. The governance of Ishgard would now be placed in the hands of high and lowborn alike, their ranks represented by the newly founded House of Lords and House of Commons. Church was separated from state. The foundation for change had been carefully laid, and the reforms proposed by Ishgard's new government passed into law without incident. His duty done, Emmerich de Borel gladly stepped down from the Archbishop's dais, only to be raised unto the highest seat in the House of Lords. Though he strove at first to refuse this honor, the unexpectedly strident voice of the Count de Durandere left him little choice but to accept. Mm -hmm. 
And so it was that the winds of gentle revolution came to stir. Hooray! Yay! We love a good gentle revolution. <laughs> Especially after all this other nonsense. Prominent among the many honored guests at Sir Emmerich's investiture were the ambassadors of Dragonkind a fitting symbol of Ishgard's newfound peace. People looked on in awe as he soared through the heavens on dragon back. And by their cheers did they hail him an azure dragoon for a new age. Decided to show up. Oh, Thus my armor. were the notes of the dragon song rewritten, the din of war giving way to a rising litany of peace and hope. So, so goofy. Like half a set of armor with a different set. Just look at the dragons. From the memoirs of Count Edmond de Fonon, Heaven's Ward. Tomorrow. Oh, what a quill. I want to write with a quill. I think I'd feel so much. so official. You know? <laughs> Sleepy. Everybody can now take a long nap. The law. I was gazing out at the sea of clouds in, all too rare, in an all too rare moment of idleness when I chanced to hold a, behold a certain hero wending her way towards the city on a dragon back. Welcome home, Burr. Nay, was twas no grave matter that moved me to greet you in person. Between you and me, I merely sought respite from the pressures of office. No sooner do I surrender my role as temporary head of state than I am burdened with a position of more permanent responsibility. <laughs> they like you too much. You're stuck. <laughs> I fancy that it echoes in some small measure the way you must feel when you 
Your improbable feats of heroism are rewarded with still more impossible challenges. Now he knows how I feel. <laughs> the myth which guided our society for generations lies in tatters. Am I then to be scorned for building upon the system of nobility that I once sought to tear down? Now what strange jest is this that places me at its pinnacle? An archbishop's bastard at the head of the House of Lords. It's ironic. Ah, but these questions are for me to answer. Yeah, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> it is not in man's nature to change overnight. This I learned through painful experience, and it was this hard lesson which convinced me to take the path on which we now follow. Even as we rebuild the bridge between man and dragon, so must we reimagine Ishgard, one carefully placed stone at a time. We must remember that it is not for us that we lay this groundwork, but for the men and women that our children will become. May their towers rise proudly from the fundament of our legacy. Smile. I hear word from Captain White Cape that Estidian has vanished from his sick room. His willfulness survives undiminished. Should you ever happen upon our unmannerly friend on your travels, pray assure him that I shall keep Ishgard safe until he deigns to come home. Thank you, Burr. And please, convey my warmest regards to Master Alphanod. Alphanod! Oh. Where, where am I going? I love seeing it sunny here. It's so pretty when it's sunny in this place. Yes, let me get it. Let me in. Oh, I'm so glad it's sunny and it was okay. You spoke with Sir Emmerich. I do not envy him his new position. Ishgard has chosen a new road, but one littered with the detritus of a thousand years of broken faith. Yet though her people may stumble from time to time, I know of none better than Sir Emmerich to lead the march of progress. As for us, there remains the small matter of ushering in a new dawn in the shadow of inscrutable Ascian machinations and a seemingly endless procession of primals. But we too must walk our chosen path, no matter how treacherous the footing. Oh, snap. What is he doing? Thank you, blood hurts. Nay, you need not remain there. We shall rendezvous at the usual place. The usual spot. All is proceeding as expected then. Aye. Aye, there is not to concern us, aside from one overly curious mouse. Mouse? <gasps> oh no! This way! Huh. Him again. It is of no moment. They will play their part and we will play ours. Is that Alfie's sister? I forget her name. <laughs> the other one? <laughs> And thus did grey mist give way to azure skies. Man and dragon rise above, voices joined in song. But beneath shrouded boughs, beyond the scope of light, shadow stirs. Mistress Lynn, Mistress Lynn, you are come a, a most excellent time. An invitation from a truly preeminent personage was delivered to the manor but a short while ago. 
Would that you had been present to receive it, but in any event, Sir Emmerich de Borrell, Lord Speaker of the House of the Lo of Lords, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights, and Viscount of House Borrell, cordially invites Mistress Lynn to dine with him at his estate. Oh, oh, that you did? You seem surprised. The messenger assured me that his lord had broached the subject with you at an earlier date, when the arrangements for the peace conference were still being finalized. He did. He said he wanted to have a drink. Of course, the intervening moons afforded little opportunity for leisure, but with the happy advent of peace, tis plain the Lord Commander sees no further cause to delay. What say you? I should be glad to accept. <laughs> Indeed, who would not? You will forgive me if I seem envious. <clears throat> I shall send word of your acceptance to Boral Manor at once. When you are ready, pray report to the Astrologicum. They will have someone to escort you the rest of the way. I get to go to dinner with Emmerich. There he is. Hello, steward. Let me in. Greetings and well met, Mistress Lynn. I have the honor and the privilege to serve as head steward of House Burrow. Though admittedly our staff is somewhat smaller than those of other noble families, being countable on one hand. <clears throat> My lord will be overjoyed to hear that you have accepted his invitation. As you will soon see, we have spared no expense. I dare say a woman of action such as yourself enjoys nary a moment's respite. Aye, the battlefield beckons even now, I am sure. But for this day, we bid you lay down your burdens and raise a glass to peace and prosperity. Okay, but if somebody ruins this one, I'm never accepting an invitation. Ever again. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> a little underdressed. <laughs> to think the Mughals would prove such harsh taskmasters. <laughs> Forgive me. I did not know you had suffered so in your quest for the horn. Those darn Mughals. I must say, your spirited accounts always come as a welcome change from the arid reports which fill my days. Yes, finally, a nice little relaxation. Right? I know. I was like, she says, like, nah, no thanks. What is he doing? Though I have lived in these lands my entire life, to hear you speak of them, there is much and more I have yet to see. Truly, yours was a marvelous journey. Come with me. <laughs> Well, truth be told, when I think back on the sweeping vistas of the churning mists, I do feel some slight pangs of wanderlust. Uh -huh. Alas, much as I would like to accept your invitation, I fear my present duties with the House of Lords demand my undivided attention. Someday, perhaps. By your deeds, you have helped us to lay the foundation for lasting reform. The formation of the Republic is but the beginning, for it is not only our system of governance which must needs change. We, the people, must learn to let go of our hatreds and rise above our bloody past. I only pray that I live long enough to see us achieve some measure of success, that I might know the lost did not die in vain. 
I can still see you there on the steps of faith, striding fearlessly towards the worm. If you could do that, who are we to balk at the challenges ahead? The question of how best to strengthen ties with the other great nations of Eorzea has been debated at length in the Lords and Commons of late. As you may imagine, Maintaining stability during this period of historic upheaval is our paramount concern. Nevertheless, we are greatly indebted to the Alliance for their support during the Grand Melee, and it would be remiss of us not to repay their faith in kind. Of course, we owe you the greatest debt of all, and it is my hope that in extending our support to you and the Scions, we might also express our gratitude to our neighbors, nay, our fellow Eorzeans, whom we pray you will continue to protect. The Lords and Commons agree on very little, but not a soul in either house begrudges your order this offer of patronage. For all you have done and will do, we thank you. Cheers. Ask a personal question. Oh no. <laughs> now that the dust has settled, what will you do? Not as a scion, I mean, but what do you want for yourself? I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Lord Commander, pray forgive the interruption. News from House Fortin. An urgent message for the Warrior of Light. I was instructed to deliver it without delay. Master Thancred returned to the manor a short time ago, bearing an injured maiden. Master Leveur and Mistress Tataru are tending to her wounds, but they like not her chances. Respectfully, my lord, they have requested the Warrior of Light's immediate presence. You must go to them, my friend, and I shall go with you. Darn. For every ending marks a new beginning. From tragedy and sacrifice, we rise to greet a new dawn, as did she. Only to be drawn unto another battlefield, another cause, as if by fate. Yes, let us see what is going on. What's going on? I like his furry coat. Oh. Is that... Alize, Alfino's twin sister. She ran afoul of the Warriors of Darkness. I had been tracking them since the ceremony at Falcon's Nest. Little did I know I was not the only one. Evidently, she had learned of their activities and attempted to shadow them on her own. Poorly. I rescued her in the Twelves Wood, and together we fled north. But though I made every effort to cover our tracks, they caught up with us on the Ishgardian border. And in the ensuing struggle, Elise took an arrow to the shoulder. It was only after we had made good our escape that I realized it was poisoned. Thank you for coming so quickly. And you, Sir Emmerich. Think nothing of it. How is she? We have done all we can for now. Although the immediate danger has passed, the poison yet lingers in her blood.
We came to Eorzea together, hoping to bring salvation to the realm our grandfather gave his life to protect. But when confronted with the bitter realities of its politics and its petty powermongers, she was driven to anger and to doubt. She refused to become embroiled in what she termed Eorzea's squabbles and distanced herself from the Scions. Though she remained hopeful of a brighter future, she would walk her own path. Would that it had not been so perilous. For all our differences, she is as dedicated as any scion to the salvation of Eorzea. But more than that, she is my sister. To be reunited with her, only to lose her forever. Gods, even to speak the words. Take heart, Master Alphino. She will be attended by our most skilled Chirurgians. Bear Mistress Leveilleur to the infirmary at once. Apprise Captain Whitecape of the situation and inform him that she is to be treated as my personal charge. Alphano, is the warrior of light, is she with you? D don't go, there is something I must say. Warriors of darkness are in league with the Asians. Slaughtering the primals is but the first step in their plan. They make for Zelfatol to bring about Garuda's summoning and to kill her. You must. You must stop them. I... I shall inform the others at once. Master Thancred, I would ask that you accompany Mistress Leveilleur to the infirmary. Your knowledge of her injuries may well prove useful in determining her treatment. Of course. We almost made it through a feast. <laughs> almost. Surely, surely they won't let her. Uh, yes, yes, I know. We must trust in Captain White Cape and his Karuids. Did they not bring Astidian back from the very brink of death? I am uncomfortably reminded of how he mocked me for praying at his bedside for days on end. What say you, my friend? Shall we turn our attention to a matter whose conclusion we yet have the power to influence? So the warriors of darkness and the Astians are conspiring to bring about Garuda's summoning, that they might put her to the sword. Then when we first encountered them in Loth asked Nod when they were confronting Ravana, God, has this been their aim all along? What do you intend to do, Master Alphano? There is much and more I do not understand, but I know this. A primal summoning cannot be ignored. Alice, I risked her life to uncover this plot, and we squander her gift at our peril. Burr, will you accompany me to Zelfatol and help me stop the Ixal's ritual? Given that Ishgard shares a border with the Ixali homeland, we have a vested interest in the outcome of this ritual. We have been willing to suffer the Beast One's intrusions into Kuwerthan lands to a point, but the summoning of a primal is an escalation we cannot abide. You shall have our fastest airship, Master Alphino. The mountains of Zelfatol are not easily traversed, and this endeavor demands all haste. The gesture is most appreciated, Sir Eric, but I fear an aerial approach is destined to fail. This is their homeland, after all, and Ixali dirigibles are not to be underestimated. Now experience tells me the only conceivable approach is by land. I believe it would be wiser to cross into Zelfatol by way of the mountain pass east of Camp Dragonhead. 
In that case, I shall send instructions for a contingent of the camp's knights to be placed at your disposal. They will secure your safe passage through the mountain and escort you thence to Zelfatol. Though my men are unqualified to confront a primal, they are more than capable of contending with the Ixar. We should be glad of their assistance, Lord Edmund. In the event Mistress Alizai regains consciousness, we shall share with you any additional information she may provide. May the Fury watch over and keep you safe. <laughs> yeah, thanks for dinner. So let us be off. We can procure any additional supplies we require in Camp Dragonhead. These warriors. So-called warriors. Have you everything you require then? Excellent. The entrance to the pass is north of Nautilan and due east of Camp Dragonhead. Though it is normally guarded by a score of Ixali warriors, I have been informed that House Wartop Knights have already dispatched them. The enemy's gate lies open. We need but walk through. As you can see, the gate is ours. Be advised that our scouts are reporting increased activity around the first mountain. Simply put, they are up to something and don't want anyone interfering. We stand ready to escort you to Zelfatol and aid as you just as you see fit. The enemy will be thick on the ground. Upon arriving, let us advance with care as we search for the site of the summoning ritual. If the gods are good, we surely have contend with the Ixal, but if they are not, we may be forced to do battle with the warriors of darkness. Cool. Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help. <laughs> get us uh to support the channel so i can be here and do more stuff with you guys all right from uh, all of us to all of you <laughs> bye